All right, so today I'm in the rainforest jungles in Chiapas, Mexico, and we're gonna go see Palenque. Palenque is uh, the ruins of an old Mayan town, city, I suppose. It was started around 299 BC, so it's over 2,000 years old. And they continued what they call elite construction, so they were building the big, impressive buildings till about 880, so they, they lived and built here for about 1,000 years. Apparently, this is one of the best examples of some of the Mayan carvings, buildings, roofs, and stuff like that. So it should be interesting to see. Uh, they said that around 800 AD, the city came under a lot of pressure. There was a lot of war in the Mayan world. It was conquered a few times, sacked. Uh, so it was abandoned around 800 AD, at which point they said that there was just a few generations of people that did like agriculture there, so farming, whatever. Um, and then after that, they just sort of moved on. When they found the city, it was overgrown by jungle. You can see it's pretty dense jungle around me. It was overgrown, a little bit destroyed. So they've cleared the jungle away. And uh, oh, wow, look at this. They've cleared the jungle away and uh, sort of rebuilt a little bit of it to show us what it looks like. Should be really cool to check it out here. Look at this. They say that uh, the city that they've uncovered now is about 2.5 square kilometers but they reckon that they've only found about 10% of the actual city. I'm about a kilometer away walking through the jungle hoping to see some monkeys, but check this out, I just came through here, and uh, wow. It's always incredible to me thinking that you're coming through these places that are, I don't think this is exactly 2,000 years old, but it's definitely 1,000 years old, just incredible. I think the uh, Mayans must have been really short people. All the entrances are really low. You gotta duck down and get in it. Uh, incredible. I was listening to a guy here who's reading out of guidebooks, so I don't generally get guides, so sometimes I'll just hover around either a guide or someone with a guidebook. And uh, he said the place that I just saw, and this is uh, like residential quarters, so I guess up further the big famous ruins are the palace, and this is sort of residential quarters where the Mayans used to live. Like, really? <laughs> oh, wow. So my understanding is that some of the best examples of Mayan uh, like bas relief and carving and some of the architectural details is in this site here. So um, really cool to see. Just un I've said it in other videos, but I just always really wonder what life would have been like for the people living here. Okay, so the building behind me is called the Count. Uh, the reason that they call it that is because uh, Count Frederick something in the 19th century, when he came and he stayed at Palenque, he made this uh, allegedly his home. It turns out he actually stayed at the base of it. Uh, but apparently this has a typical sort of Mayan Palenque layout, which is the building on the top with three porticos, the one big one in the middle and two side rooms off to the side. And when they did some excavating and, and archaeological um, searches, they found three tombs inside this pyramid. A um, little bit of human remains, lots of offerings. It said small snails drilled for pendants like necklaces um, and just some other offering stuff. So incredible. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of a reading from the sign behind me just to give a bit more information. Uh, apparently, Palenque's rulers recognized the origin of their dynasty in the remote past, thousands of years before their births. Uh, according to the inscriptions that are found around here, the god Gi ascended the throne in 3309 BC, two centuries before the creation of our world in 3114 BC, uh, according to classical Mayan mythology. Uh, the first ruler who we can consider historic, so that we kind of believe, uh, was Kuk Balam, which means Quetzal Jaguar, and he was born in 397 AD and became king in 431 AD. Um, the most famous ruler that I read about before I came here was uh, King Jarab Pakal who ruled from 615 AD to 683 AD. So I guess most of the historic stuff that we sort of know is true is towards the uh, the end of when the city was inhabited. Incredible. So we're going to check out the palace. I believe this is the palace and then uh, the big temple of, I can't remember, it's temple of Sun Moon. I, I get them confused. I'll, I'll read something on it. But just incredible. The, s the scale of it is mental. It's really cool. They say that uh, when they found the body of Pakal, he was covered in cinnabar, which the Mayans use a lot, like a red substance to represent sort of blood and life. Uh, but uh, he was also covered in mercury, uh, which is highly poisonous and obviously deters thieves from uh, stealing anything from it. It's really interesting. Like, you look at what people were able to create back then like these massive massive structures we'd have a difficult time trying to recreate this stuff today uh you know all hand carving and everything but they also knew a lot about other like alchemy and chemistry and stuff because that mercury i remember being in china and a couple other places and ancient sites the they were protected by mercury to deter or kill thieves that got in so we think we're so advanced but it's amazing what people back then really know and how much knowledge we've lost Wow, it's really, really incredible being in here. So we're in the tomb uh, underneath that big giant temple. And it's just, yeah, it's crazy being inside the tomb. A Mayan tomb. The amount of work that would have been into this. You can see here where the stairs are and uh, the wall's blocked off and even where the tomb is that uh, only part of the wall's been removed so we can see inside. I'm assuming they would have taken that down um, when they excavated it and put it back up, but it just shows you the amount of work and effort that they put into this just to seal it all up for their, uh, their really powerful ruler. It's incredible, the amount of work. Like, even look at the way it's, it's sloped up into roof. I'm, I think that's typically mine, but the, the sloped, the, the flat at the top, it's just the amount of work and understanding of engineering is incredible. stairs are and uh, the walls blocked off and even where the tomb is that uh, only part of the wall has been removed so we can see inside I'm assuming they would have taken that down um, when they excavated it and put it back up but it just shows you the amount of work and effort that they put into this just to seal it all up for their uh, their really powerful ruler it's incredible the amount of work like even look at the way it's it's sloped up into roof I'm, I think that's typically mine but the the sloped the the flat at the top it's just the amount of work in Understanding of engineering is incredible.
it's really, really hot and humid in this uh, rainforest jungle here. Atmospheric, but I'm soaking, soaking wet, just like everybody else that I see. It's kind of funny, all the gringos soaking wet and all the Hispanic people are fine. It's cool, you can see how they've even created like a little canal for the river with, with walls, I guess, to prevent it ever flooding and overflowing. But again, just the amount of work that's put into these sites and the knowledge is insane. The uh, stairs here are generally quite a bit narrower than the Aztec ones. The Aztec ones had a little bit of space. This, this isn't, isn't even as long or wide as my foot, so I gotta be a little careful. Don't wanna break my neck. I can see on the temple behind me how it would have looked before they sort of uncovered it again and excavated it where it's all overgrown. So if you'd come through here and this was, stuff was all overgrown and covered in dirt and grass and trees and stuff, you wouldn't even really know that this was all here. I guess that's why they've only found or excavated, uncovered about 10% of it. Look at that though. Uh, this is the Juego de Pelota, which is the ball court where they'd play the uh, the Mayan game. I can't remember. I think it's might have been an Apocalypto the movie. Uh, I actually thought the Native Americans did it, um, sort of where I'm from in Canada, but where they have the ball, and I'm pretty sure it's the one with the circle rings, and they kick the ball through there, and then I think, whether it's true or not, sometimes they use heads. I have no idea if that's true. It's just something I remember. But uh, yeah, the really famous Mayan ball game was played here. Well, that was very, very cool. Uh, this is my first Mayan rune. I've seen quite a bit of the Aztec and pre-Aztec runes. This is the first Mayan rune. Uh, it's cool. You can definitely see the difference in sort of construction techniques. And I just love, again, I know I've reiterated a couple times, but just thinking about what life was like and the amount of work that people put into it and uh, the in engineering knowledge and ability that they had. And uh, just the sheer amount of work and the scale of it is incredible. And I think that it was all abandoned and, and covered up. We're amazing creatures. All right, I'm gonna take a walk through the forest. Hopefully I find some monkeys, I haven't seen any. If I don't, then uh, this will be the end of the video and we'll catch you on the next one. And uh, you can subscribe if you want to. All right, quick little addendum to the video. Uh, I thought it was funny when I was leaving and when I was getting there, but I thought I'd add it because when I was leaving, the guides and the guys where I parked the bike uh, at the uh, archeological site, when they realized they didn't want a guide and they couldn't make any money from me from that, just kept asking if I wanted mushrooms. And uh, they weren't talking about the kind of mushrooms that you put on pizza. Well, I guess you could put it on pizza, but it's not the food kind of mushrooms that they were offering me. Um, also, I'm here, I decided to get some food, and I love Mexican food so much, you just never know what you're gonna get. So I just ordered uh, a salad for the first time in months. Just been eating non-stop like tacos and fried tortilla stuff. So I need some, I can feel the lack of fruit and vegetables, but when you order something, you never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes you get chips or guacamole, salsa, whatever. This time, they brought up this, just like a flatbread with some garlic, butter, and hot sauce, and people, the guys, just incredible. Check it out.
and they just bring this stuff for free. Uh, I also got a Tezclate, which doesn't look quite what I thought it was going to look like. Uh, it's a native drink to Chiapas. Uh, it has indigenous roots with like the Mayans. It's a mix of corn, chocolate, uh, achiote, which is some flour, vanilla, sugar, and uh, something else. I don't remember what it is. Let's see. interesting. It's not as good as Atole. I love Atole, which is the other corn whatever drink. It looks kind of weird. It tastes right. It's really, I don't know how to describe it, like hint of chocolate, hint of uh, corn, and something else. It must be that agioti stuff.